Hey guys, welcome to the first lesson. Um, today we're gonna do setting up the Wishes Studio project, um, simple stuff, and hopefully by the end we'll have a nice window. Uh, fantastic. So, first of all, let's open up the good old fashioned Wishes Studio. Let's create a new project. Thank you for being so blazingly fast. Okay, there we go. So I'll go to C, uh, empty project. All right. So let's do next. I'll name it um, graphics course. Now there is this play solution and project in the same directory, which is what we're gonna do in the end. But I I don't think this is in the lay uh, in um, earlier than 2019. So just to keep this relevant for you guys as well, if you uh, are on the earlier version, we're gonna do this manually. But we are gonna place a solution put it in the same directory. So if you have this checkbox, you can do that and skip uh, the next few steps. All right, I'm gonna hit create. Let it do its thing. There we go. Um, great, okay, so we're gonna do a few things just to clean up here, because it's gonna get a bit messy with linking and stuff like that, so I wanna make sure we have a clean, uh, easy to work with solution. Um, so first of all, it's set to x86, which is 32-bit um, architecture. Uh, this is not used anymore, like we're all pretty much on 64-bit machines, uh, all the game engines run in 64-bit. So I'm actually going to go into Configuration Manager here, so just click the Configuration and then here, or you can go into Build, and then here's the configura uh, Configuration Manager. So I'm going to go in there, you can see Platform Win32, Yawn, Old, so I'm going to go into Active Solution Platforms, Edit, and then you just take this x86 and you just remove that bad boy. Yeah, get out of here, man. Yeah, x64. That's who we want. I'm also gonna make sure um, we're on debug right now. Uh, you could remove release as well. I don't think we're gonna be talking about the release at all. But um, just make sure you're on debug or you might get some weirdness uh, with linking later on. Uh, cool. So now we're in debug. We're in x64. So if we look in here in our uh, Solution Explorer, we have a graphics course project and our solution. Uh, fantastic. Uh, we're not going to be working with filters, actually. I'm going to turn this into show all files. So I'm just going to hit that button and it's going to be completely empty because we don't have anything uh, right now in our uh, in our folder. Uh, but first of all, let's take a look at that project file and see where it actually is. So I'm going to go into uh, I'm going to go into the graphics course folder here. Uh, wherever you put it on your computer. So we have the SLN file, which is the solution file. And then we have the graphics course folder. And if we go in there, here's the uh, VCX proj, uh, the actual project file, together with the filters and the, and the, and the things. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take all of this and just cut it and put it over here. Just put it next to the SLN file. And I'm just going to go ahead and remove that folder. Um, this is going to make it much simpler to understand when we're the providing paths and so on for linking and including. We're going to be much more clear about where the path actually is. Otherwise, it might be, you know, which folder is this referring? Is, this the, is it the solution or the project folder? And it, become a, it becomes a bit weird. So I like just having everything in one folder, at least when I'm working with just one project in one solution. Um, of course, this is going to be a bit weird now because this is still going to reference the old one. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and remove this uh, from the solution and then I'm going to go in and add it back in. So I'm going to do add existing project uh, and then go into prog and graphics course. And there it is. There's the VC export. I'm just going to select that and there we go. And turn it back into show all files mode. Great, fantastic. So now we have the project. Uh, let's add some files. So I'm actually going to make a folder here called source. So that's going to be our code files. Um, so if I go into Visual Studio now and hit this refresh button here, we should have a little arrow and there it is. There's the source folder. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a new item. I'm going to make a C++ file just called main. Very uncontroversial. So let's just make hello world, right? So we should do include stdio and we'll include uh, this is at least how I like to do my hello world so we need main and then we just do printf hello future games 
What? And then the system pause. And uh, let's run it and see what happens. Boom. Now I actually see that it didn't get saved. Uh, I saw here with my eyes that it did actually build for Win32. So I think what happened was I was a little bit too eager to remove the project and I didn't save it. So all the configuration stuff I did uh, didn't get saved. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it again. It's fine. It's a nice reminder. So I'll go in here. Configuration manager. Hit the active solution platforms. Edit. And then remove this x86. Uh, like that. I run and debug and then close. Cool. Debug x64. And then if I hit compile again. There you go. Now x debug x64. That's what I'm looking for. Bada boom. Hello, future games. Great. All right. Uh, so if we look in the um, in the solution folder now, we're gonna see a few things. So we're gonna have this debug here uh, that was created when I built the Win32, uh, and we're gonna have this X64. So if you only have the X64, that means you didn't mess up like I did and actually save the pro the project. Uh, and if you have a, only a debug. That means you might have built it for x32 uh, or x86, uh, uh, I should say. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and remove that debug one because that's old. We don't care about that. And if I go into x64, we're going to have a debug folder. And here is everything that uh, has been built. So we have the object files, all the, like, the intermediary files, and then we also have the exe and everything. Um, so that's cool. That's it's great. Um, however, just in the name of or in the sake of keeping things a little bit tidy, I'm actually gonna configure it a little bit just to put like the build files in a folder and the exe file in a folder, just to have them separated and easily accessible. So I'm gonna go into Solution Explorer and then go into the project, like not the solution, but the project properties. And uh, here we have these two first options in general, use output directory and intermediate directory. So on output, I'm just going to remove all of this and instead just write uh, binaries. All right. And then in intermediate directory, you can also call it like output or program or whatever you want to call it. It doesn't really matter. Uh, and then in the intermediate directory, I'm going to call this build. You can also call it, uh, you can also call it intermediate if you want. Uh, I'm also going to add the trailing slash here because I know Wisha Studio will be angry at us if we don't. Uh, so just make sure you have a trailing slash there. Trailing backslash, that is. Because this is Windows. Uh, all right, so let's apply it. And that should be fine. Let's see what happens. So if I hit F6 now, it's building everything. And we can see here the output was in graphics course, binaries, uh, graphics course.exe. So let's go check it out. Here, binaries. Yeah, there it is. Uh, together with the, the, the PDDB file and the uh, incremary link file, uh, which we don't really care about, but that's there as well. And then if we go to build, here is the like the main object file and all of the other good stuff. And then we can actually go ahead and just nuke this x64 folder now. Because we don't care anymore. All right, great. So product up and running. Looks pretty good. Um, so how do we open a window? Like, what's the how? How does that happen? And uh, this is where things get a little bit more complicated. Um, Windows uses something called a Win API uh, for creating windows and routing um, keyboard and mouse events uh, to your program and so on. So I'm gonna write this down. So what we're gonna do is called context creation. Context creation. So context. Creation. Um, yeah, so Windows uses something called WinAPI. That's the uh, operating system's uh, way of communicating with uh, window management and so on. Uh, however, it's immensely complicated. It's it's very finicky and very hard to get working properly. And you have to implement everything from scratch, which is, uh, you know, it's fun, but it takes a lot of time and it's very, very finicky. And we don't have time for that. We're way cooler than that. So we're going to use a library that does all of these for us in a much more simpler way. And we're going to use something called uh, GLFW. There are many more. Um, there are many more um, libraries like it, like SFML and SDL. But I, but I just happen to like GLFW. I think it's very simple. 
And what GLFW does is it handles all the calls of WinAPI. So it sort of negotiates with WinAPI and handles all of that. It will also do stuff like sound and, you know, controller support and so on. So GLFW is sort of a wrapper library to make our lives a lot more uh, easier to live. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to include this library into our project. So head over to glfw.org. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's just a free library. So we can just go in, head into the download section. And this is important. Make sure you download the 64-bit Windows binaries. That's the one we want. All right. Because if you just hit, the, hit this download here, that's going to give you the source uh, to GLFW. So you're going to have to build it yourself. And that just takes way too long for us. And we're way too cool. So I'm just going to hit the 64-bit Windows binaries in the download here. All right. So 64-bit Windows binaries. Boom. All right. Let's check it out. There it is. So you just unzip it using your favorite zipping program. There it is. All right, so we have a bunch of stuff here. So it includes pre-built binaries for um, for uh, a lot of, of uh, Visual Studio versions. So I'm using 2019, uh, so that's the one I'm going to use, but uh, make sure you use the one you are actually sitting with. Um, so I'm going to use 2019, and oh, here's some stuff. So GLFW with the pre-built uh, binaries, they include two ways of linking with the library. They include static linking, where it's built into the EXE. Um, when we build our game, the GLFW library is going to be actually baked into the EXE. Um, so the EXE will be, get a little bit bigger. Uh, and there's also dynamic linking, where the EXE doesn't know anything about the library, but when we start up the game, or start up, the, yeah, start up the game, it's going to then load all of GLFW uh, during runtime. So that's why it's called dynamic linking. And that's why you use these DLL and the DLL lib. But then we have to make sure to, like, you know, include the DLL with the EXE um, when we, you know, ship the game or whatever. Uh, I tend to prefer static linking in this case. If you have few libraries, then static linking is fine. Like it doesn't like you know it doesn't explode the size of the exe or anything, and I think that's just way more convenient than having all of these DLLs that you need to keep track of and you know um, do all of those things with. I am gonna have an addendum to this video going into a little bit more detail about what linking is and why, uh, and sort of how it works under the hood. It's not required to uh, to watch. But if you feel like this, these few steps coming up are a little bit confusing or a little bit hard to follow, I do recommend checking out that video just to get a little bit more of a fundamental understanding about like why is it this way? Why? What are we actually doing? Um, but just to keep things brief, let's just go. So we want to have uh, some place to keep this library file so we can reference later on in Visual Studio. So I'm going to go into the graphics course uh, folder here. And uh, with our binaries build and source, and I'm just going to make a new folder. I'm going to call it lib. So I'll place this glfw3.lib, not the DLL one. That's used for dynamic linking with the DLL. We, I'm just going to use the this one. That's just the name and the lib. So I'm just going to copy that into the lib folder. Great. Um, yeah. Okay. So let's go into Visual Studio. Solution Explorer. Again, going to project properties, not solution properties. Um, and let's go to linker here. All right. So we're going to link. So let's go into the linker. Uh, so first of all, we want to tell Visual Studio, like, where are we placing the library files uh, so that we can later reference them. And there we're going to use this additional library directories in the general uh, tab. So we're going to go additional library directories. And we're just going to type in lib. And because we put, because we put the project and the solution in the same folder, there's no ambiguity about like which folder is this reference, like wh where is the lib? Uh, like there's only one folder, so we just have to type lib, and then it makes our lives very easy. Um, and then we're gonna tell Visual Studio to be like, when you build this exe, 
don't just link our object files like our, our C++ code that we wrote, also link in, uh, link in this additional library file that I'm saying, and we're gonna go with input. And here are additional dependencies. So you can see it's already linking a bunch of libraries that are, you know, system and kernel uh, libraries uh, to make your C++ work. But we're just gonna link with uh, S, uh, glfw3.lib. Right, so we're just gonna type it in. And here I click this arrow and do edit and then an additional libraries, I'll just type it in here. Um, because we want to, you know, we want to keep these uh, <laughs> these here. If I just typed in here, I might uh, happen to replace uh, the ones that are uh, inherited. So I want to make sure those are still there. <clears throat> All right. So we have glfw3.lib. Uh, okay. And I just hit apply and okay. And let's see what happens if I hit F5. It's going to build and there we go. It started up. So, you know, nothing really changed since we're not using the library at all. Uh, but at least we didn't get an error, which means that the linking actually worked fine. Um, so uh, that's good. If we got an error here, uh, a few things to notice, uh, a few things to uh, keep in mind is, are you making sure that you are in 64-bit mode? Because we don't know that 64-bit libraries, so if you get some sort of linker error, it might be because you either downloaded the wrong uh, bit so you might have downloaded the 32-bit uh, libraries, uh, or you might be in the wrong configuration, so you might be um, building our game in 32-bit, but trying to link with a 64-bit library, which is also a uh, future, um, um, which is still just gonna complain about that. Um, great, but yeah, free feel to post in the Discord if you're getting errors here, and I will help you out. Uh, but here's where you should be getting just this window uh, opening up. Uh, Nothing changing, that should be the where you should be. Great, okay, so how do we use, how do we call these functions in the library then? So now we have the library included, uh, or um, links, which means the functions are there to, available for us to call, but we just have no way to call them right now. And that's what the include files are for. Uh, so let's check out uh, the glfw folder again, and we have this include folder here. And that's all the headers that are defining all of these functions that we can call. So if we're going to include here, this is glfw, and it is just two files, which is also, I like glfw because it's very small. It's just two files and that's it. And we, let's just edit it and see what's in it. And yeah, there's a bunch of stuff. Uh, it's including stuff, but if we go down, yeah, here's some constants that it's defining. And hopefully, if we go down a little bit, we should start seeing some yeah, here's some functions being de de being defined like glfw window should close and you know glfw destroy window. So this is defining all of these functions for us, uh, or declaring I should say. It's declaring all of these functions for us so that we can call them, and then it will get linked with the uh, .lib file. So um, so that's where the code is defined. Great. Um, so let's uh, let's get this going. So I'll just. Uh, go into our graphics course folder and I'll create a folder called include. All right, so that's where we're gonna uh, put all the files that we wanna be able to include in our code. All right, so I will take this glfw and I will copy it down here like that. So I'll just copy it into the include folder. Great. All right, so how do we define, uh, so how do we include it then? Uh, well, first we have to go into the product properties again. And in the C slash C++ uh, section, I'm gonna go into general, and then there is this additional include directories. And that's where we're defining additional paths that we can include uh, in our code. So I'll just type include like this. All right. So this means that when we are including a file, it will know to look in this include folder to see if there are any files there that we're trying to reference. Uh, so I'll just hit OK. And now we should be able to do include S, uh, oh, whoops, glfw slash glfw3.h. All right, so that should be available to us. And let's uh, hit F6, see, yeah, it compiled. Uh, I should note that I did uh, 
include the glfw folder in my include folder so i i didn't just copy the files raw which i think it maybe could have done it might have worked or it might not have but usually you want to just take the folders and everything as is and just paste it into your include uh, folder in your project you don't want to mess around with the file structure here because then the internal includes of the library might be broken like maybe they expect there it to be an a glfw folder um there so uh, don't mess with that just take the folders as they are and just put them in your project cool all right so now we included great so let's open a window so I'm just going to remove the uh, hello world. We're not going to be needing that anymore. So, uh, I mean, let's just go into the documentation here of GLFW. I'm just going to go into documentation. And there's this very easy, uh, small little um, code snippet here that includes just the code we need. Uh, so first of all, it says like, okay, we want to initialize the library. Uh, so we're just going to call this GLFW init. Uh, so let's do that. Let's do GLFW init. So that's just going to initialize the library doing whatever that does. There's a lot of <laughs> comments, so probably that's important. Um, great, I'm not going to check it because I'm dangerous. Uh, and then here is the glfw create window. So this is where uh, all the action happens. So let's just call that glfw create window. Uh, so we have to specify a width and a height. So I'm just going to do 800 by 600. Uh, title. Graphics are cool. So here's a GLFW monitor. Uh, let's see what that says. Monitor to use for full screen mode or null for windowed mode. Oh yeah, okay. So monitor means which sc which screen basically. Uh, we don't care. Let's just to do null. We don't. We we're gonna do windowed. So let's use null. Um, share the window whose context is share resources with or null to not share resources. So this has to do with like. Uh, what is a context um, and uh, th it's not really important we're just going to do one window but if you have multiple windows you might want OpenGL to share resources between those windows um, so then you, that, that's what you would use this for but we don't care we're just going to use one window it's not really important to us I'm just going to type null uh, it's saying I spelled cool wrong but I don't think that's I don't think I, I don't think that's how it's spelled actually all right, so let's see, let's see what happens. Let's just run this. Oh, took a little while. But did you see that it sort of flashed open a window? Let's say that again. But a window sort of flashed up for a, a brief moment, and then the whole thing quit down. Um, and that sort of makes sense, because we created a window, but then the program was over. Like, we returned from the main. So... So the program shut down, right? And then that also closes the window down. Uh, so we have to sort of keep the game or the program alive, you know, to because we want to see the window, we want to move around, and we can't have the program just quitting on us and, and finishing. We want to keep it open. So here's what we come into the like the main loop or the main loop of the of the program. So we're just gonna do while glfw. I think it's called should. No, let's just check it out here. I don't know why I'm. Free, free willing it glfw window should close and it takes this like this window um, variable so this glfw create window it returns a pointer to an L glfw window structure all right so we're gonna have to save that because we're gonna use it later so let's do just whoops glfw window window is equal to glfw create window so now we're saving this window structure here um, right, and now we can use it in the glfw window should close window. Like that. So let's see what happens. Oh, oh, sorry, while it shouldn't, <laughs> right. So while it shouldn't should close, <laughs> it's the worst double negative I've ever said. So while it wants to stay open, we should be in this while loop. Okay, so let's try this now. Ah, there we go, great. However, it's that's not great. It's very unresponsive. Uh, I can't move it. I can't close it. I can't do anything. I can't even tab up to it, actually. So that's not good. So what? why is that happening? 
well, we're in this while loop, uh, but no code is running, right? And, you know, this window, uh, while we're opening it and, uh, you know, uh, while it's open, it still has to run code to work. Uh, you know, it's not like it's magic happening somewhere else. Like, it's still our program. Uh, so it needs to get a chance to, like, sort of update its position, update the, the button being hovered and stuff like that. And handling keys and handling mouse inputs. Uh, while now we're sort of in a stuck in a while loop, just going like nothing. We're just like sort of like hanging around in the while loop. So to give uh, the window a chance to update and do its thing, we're gonna call uh, glfw uh, poll events. And it actually doesn't take any um, any variable. And what poll events does is you know you check what's the mouse doing, like what are, where are we hovering, are we trying to move the window around, are we closing it, like everything like that is getting handled in the poll events function. So now if we hit F5, we should see that it's responsive. I can move it around, I can resize it. It kind of looks a bit weird, but that's fine. We don't really care. At least the window is like working like we're expecting it to. I can maximize it and minimize it and tab back up and stuff. And most importantly, if I hit the X button, boom, it will close. Because as I hit the X button, it will sort of mark it as, okay, we want to close. So this GLFW window should close, will return true. And then our while loop uh, exits and then the program exits. So then everything shuts down. Um, great. So that's the window and that's the first lesson. So uh, see you guys next lesson.